It's time. Oh, oh wait, I've already done that entry. So when I started uploading the vlogs uh, about how me and my partner are uh, renovating the house, I had a couple of requests from people where they basically wanted me to sort of show uh, a guide, like a, a DIY guide on how to and what we're doing. I did actually like the idea of that, but unfortunately just the scale of the project we had, I really didn't have time to film and edit and yada yada on top of what I was already doing. So I can do a bit of that in here if you're interested. Things like sort of how to how to fix up as best I know. You'll be learning along with me, so any mistakes I make you'll see them made and hopefully you'll learn to avoid. So basically, I hope y'all is ready for the knowledge bombs I'm about to drop on ya. Jesus, what the hell was that? <laughs> so step one of doing up this wall is gonna consist of trying to get out all of these little wall plugs, things like this. Got to get out all of these nails. Basically, I need to get the wall to as blank a canvas as I can before I start. What I'm then gonna be doing is it's gonna be a case of cleaning. So it's gonna involve getting a paintbrush in all these little nooks and crannies, trying to knock off all the dust. We're then gonna have to sugar soap the wall to get it as clean as possible before we then start putting things like the base coats on. In regards to these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-drill these holes uh, and I'm gonna fill them with decorator's cork. But I'll explain more about that as and when I get to it. So step one, need to clean this whole bleeding lot down. Right, here's a little pearl for you. In walls like this, where you've got absolutely hundreds of wall plugs, a really useful little trick for getting these out easily is to use a simple wood screw. The idea being that these can be an absolute nightmare to try and grip hold of, even with pliers, and then when you pull them, half the time they either just snap or nothing happens at all. Now, it doesn't have to be a wood screw, but wood screws are useful because they've got a wider thread. But literally, all you need to do, you get your screwdriver or impact driver, or whatever, you screw in, only has to be even a couple of mil like that, and then you use a normal claw hammer, dig in, and out she comes. No more wall plug in there. There you go. Easy as that. See, I do teach you some useful things on this channel. Probably turns out that's common knowledge and I'm really behind the times, but whatever, you got it. Now on a tricky little sucker like this, where you can see that I've actually been trying to use the claw hammer and it just is not engaging at all. And in fact, all it's done is it's torn the, the threads off. All you need is a pair of pliers. Um, they don't have to be long nose like this, um, but so long as they've got the, the cutting section in there. Now all you need to do, again, you need to bite into it slightly then get your claw hammer in behind, and then hopefully a combination of the two. Ugh. Success. Just like that. Don't tell me there isn't something satisfying about that. There we go, that's got all of the raw plugs and nails out of the wall. As you can see, they've all, all been pulled out. Next step now will be to re-drill all of the holes, so to make sure that the, uh, the cork adheres. Time to get brushing. All I'm doing here is just with a normal paintbrush, I'm just going along all of the lines I can see where there's dirt built up. And I'm just trying to give it a good scrape, try and get anything loose on the wall off. You can see the clouds of stuff that's coming off, hopefully. But yeah, you just want to get really in there, give it a really good scrub as best you can, because when we go over it with a sugar coat, we don't want any uh, loose bits. You need to get a specialist primer for uh, masonry and brick walls and that should hopefully seal in any of the excess dust. If you can get as much of it out as you can, you're gonna make life a lot easier for yourself. Hence why you need to wear breathing apparatus, and that's why I'm gonna put mine back on, so no more talking for a bit. I'm also gonna do a quick tidy up of these door frames, because as you can see, they've used expanding building foam to uh, fill them in, but they've not done a very tidy job. Uh, I've already done the one on this side, as you can see, it's looking a lot better. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, because frankly, I'm not bothered. But uh, the only important thing you really need to think about with building foam is you cut it, you don't rip it. Because when you rip it, this stuff has expanded to fill the gap it's in. If you pull it, there's a good chance it will actually pull out the um, the plug it's formed. So you just need to cut it. All I'm using is a scalpel or X-Acto knife or even a Stanley, whatever. Any of those will be fine. So uh, we'll give that a quick tidy up now. Just like that. Much tidier. Whew, that took a while. So that is the whole of this wall and this wall brushed down in entirety. Got as much dust off as I can. Next up is to use cork. Uh, I'm using normal decorator's cork. Uh, all you've got to do with this stuff is make sure that A, it's paintable, and B, it's for exterior or masonry walls. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go along and I'm going to zap each one of these little holes as best I can and fill in any sort of cracks like along the top here and maybe in some of the corners or around this brick, that sort of thing.
Well, that took a while longer than I thought it would. I've now finished uh, filling in all the holes, all the cracks, all the gaps with the, uh, the cork sealant. I've just got to let that dry and then I need to wash down the wall and attack it with the primer. So, sugar soap time. At the risk of being repetitive and just filming a wall, that is now the wall cleaned, sugar soap water. Next I'm just going to give it a dry and then we'll leave it for an hour or so to uh, absorb the remainder of that water before we give it a coat with the primer. Right, it's about an hour and a half later. I've cleaned my brush and it's time to get started on the painting. I've bought this masonry brick and exterior wall primer. Ugh, gross. Looks horrible before it's mixed. First thing we need to do is give this a really good stir because the paint settles over time and it separates. So we'll give that a good mix up before we try and apply it. There we go, I think that should just about do it. Mm -mm. But then really, it's just a case of picking a spot and getting stuck in. Now you may have noticed for the first coat, I'm using the brush. I will be using a roller of it later on to make life easier. But to start with, you really want to make sure you get this stuff into all the little nooks and crannies. So. It's always better to use a brush. So I'm going to get on with this the slow way and uh, you're going to join me in a minute after this little time lapse. Woo! That's the first coat done. So it's important after you've finished your work to make sure there aren't any drips and if there are you just catch them with the brush. And speaking of brush, it's incredibly important that in between coats you wash your brush. Now obviously it varies between paints, but for this particular brand, I need to leave it two hours before I apply the second base coat. In the meantime, I've got a few errands to run, so I'm gonna head out and I'll pop back once it's dry and we'll crack on with the second coat. Well, it's about four hours later. Those errands took longer than I thought it was going to. So I'm definitely gonna be able to do the second coat, but I won't bore you with another time lapse. I'll just get that done and then you can see it when it's finished. There you go, that's second coat done. You can see there's still a sort of dark patch down here and a slightly darker patch along this side, but I think with the top coat, that should cover it. And then we've probably got to start on this wall, or this section. <sighs> There's a lot to do. So it's the next day, and uh, this coat has actually dried very evenly. I'm pretty happy with that. The darker patch that was here and down here, you can barely make out anymore. You can just kind of see. So I'm more than happy to crack on with the top coat. So I'm going to do that first before I have to dust down this wall and make this all dirty again. So we're going to get this side completely finished up on with the top coat. So again, for the top coat, I've just gone for a simple white. I've gone for some self-cleaning masonry paint. It's going to be exactly the same method as before. I need to stir it, but the only upside is this time I get to use a roller rather than a brush because at this point, all the gaps have been filled in. It's just applying the top layer. There we go, there's wall number one finished. Now i just got to rinse and repeat for the um, rest of this place. Another handy little trick is when you're done with your roller, if you wrap it in cling film, that'll keep like that now for days. So you can just use it as and when you need to. Now the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I've still got this thing attached to the wall. And that's because this is, I think is about the only thing I'm planning on keeping. This will be really useful. You see it's got these little boxes. So this will be perfect for storing all different nuts and bolts and screws and nails and whatever. And outside, behind the bins, the previous residents left me all of these different boxes. So that is going to be kept. So first thing I've got to do now before I start on this wall is to get that off and find somewhere to keep it. Just to show you how old this place is or how long it's been since any work was last done. The uh, raw plugs on this wall are so old, they're actually made of wood, which you don't see anymore, they're all plastic these days, but the trouble is, you can't get the little blighters out, because they just uh, shred. Any real way to get them out is just with perseverance. There you go. Now for sections like up here where you've got some loose brick, there's a little sneaky trick you can use for this. What you want to do is get some super strong adhesive that is suitable for brick, uh, which this is, bonds wood, plastic, Brick, metal, stone, plaster, you get the idea. And basically, you're just going to use it as a mortar substitute. Now, I need to make it perfectly clear, you do not use this to build a brick wall. There's a reason houses are built with brick and mortar, not brick and glue. But uh, for minor repairs like this, it'll be absolutely fine. Holy sweet mother of Jesus' 
pearls that took a really long time this whole section of wall has now been brushed down it has been cleaned it has been soaped it has been filled in and it is literally ready now for base coats I've just got to give it a few more minutes to dry as you can see it's still a little bit damp over this side again I'll spare you the time lapse because you've seen it all done before coat number one coat number two a cheeky little touch up coat number three and the final top coat number four I think for a finishing touch, just along the top of this wall here, where this horrible bit of pretty old, gnarly, half-painted wood is, you see there's quite a few sort of nails and stuff stuck out, which unfortunately I'm not going to be able to really do much with. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a nice little strip of timber just across the front, just to basically make it look tidy and nice. So I'll get straight on that. There it is, all finished up. Uh, I think this is where I'm going to leave the video for today. Um, it's pretty satisfying when I look back at where I started from and where I'm up to so far. But uh, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, you'll be doing me a huge favour. And check out part three as and when. Bye!